so as I said, welcome to uh, this week's session. I hope you've had a good week. So just a recap of what we were talking about last week. So um, the first part of the session last week, we went over some information about the Grove board, the microcontroller and the Zod software, to, just to get us an introduction to those things. And then in the second half of the session last week, um, we worked through a couple of little tasks to get started with using the board. So we learned how to use the LED, the buzzer, the button and the potentiometer. Just a little recap of some of the, the key things that we learned last week to refresh everyone's memories. Um, this is the Zod software. Uh, in Zod, instead of writing code, we build it up using these um, little graphical um, black boxes called nodes. Nodes have input pins on the top and output pins on the bottom. We can edit these pins by clicking on the node and changing their parameters in the inspector. And we can link nodes together by clicking on the pins and connecting them. And that's how we build up our program. If we want to learn more about what a node or its pins does, then we can use this little question mark button up here, which opens the help pane, which has some explanation. And just a, a quick reminder about some useful buttons. So up here next to where it says project browser, we have a page button that opens a new patch. We have a book button that adds a new library. And then down here in the bottom right, we have a lightning button that is upload and a ladybird button that is upload and debug. Uh, we didn't use that last week, but we will this week. Uh, and just a quick reminder about how to add nodes to your patch. So either you can find them over here in your library and drag them onto the patch, or you can double click on the patch and start typing the name and insert them that way. So just a little uh, whistle top uh, refresher for you all. So what are we gonna be doing today? Um, so I've just given you a quick welcome and a recap. Um, then we're going to look at uh, what is lesson three in the beginner's guide, which uh, explores some of the useful nodes in Zod. We're not going to do hands-on examples with those. I just have a few videos to show you examples. But if you want to go back and uh, work through those tasks yourself, they are all in the beginner's guide as um, kind of step-by-step -step instructions. So you can go away after the session and practice with those if you like. Uh, and really the reason for that is uh, to save time so that we can get onto the interesting stuff, um, which is this lesson four, building devices. We're gonna learn how to build our own node in Zod, which is really useful, uh, incorporates some of the more um, complex things so you can get a bit of an idea of, um, you know, other than just turning on an LED, what is actually possible. Um, and that is gonna, we're gonna do that so that we can learn how to use the um, OLED screen on the board. Uh, which is really useful and also quite cool. Uh, and then if we have time, uh, I'll just kind of set you a little mini challenge in your breakout groups um, to see if you can come up with some interesting ideas about what kind of things you might be able to build with this board, um, what kind of things you might be interested in, in doing with this kind of hardware in future. Down to some useful Zod nodes. Uh, the first ones I'm gonna show you are tweak and watch nodes. And these are some of the most useful nodes in Zod because what they do is they let us edit and watch what's going on in our program in real time. So last time when we were changing things around, every time we wanted to change something, we had to change something and then upload the program again. So tweak and watch nodes let us cut out um, that step. We can just upload them and then we don't have to upload them again to start changing things and editing things in our, in our program. So this is what they look like. On the left here are a number of tweak nodes. For example, we can use tweak nodes to change the parameters of an input pin whilst the program is running. Um, and then on the other side, we have a watch node. Uh, so we connect these to output pins instead of input pins, and they let us see what is happening on that output pin. There are a number of different tweak nodes. We talked last week about the different data types in Zod, so Boolean, um, string, number, and that they all have their own color. Um, 
So basically you just have to connect the right type of tweak node to the right type of pin. So if you have a Boolean pin, you connect it to a Boolean uh, tweak node. If you have a number pin, you connect it to a number tweak node. And then once we've connected a tweak node to our pin, uh, when we upload the program, we can click on the tweak node and over in the editor, we can edit the parameters whilst the program is running. So things will happen in real time. If you update something in a tweak node, it'll update on your board, it'll update in the program. Uh, then over here on the right, we have a watch node. There's only one type of watch node. Um, you can connect it to basically any output pin to, to watch the output of that pin. So, you know, you can connect it to um, a sensor node to, to, to watch the output of a sensor or something like that. There's only one type of pin that you can't connect a watch node to, and that's a pulse pin. There is a way around that, and I'll uh, show you an example of that in a minute. So I just have a little video here um, with an example of using tweak and watch nodes, um, just to let you know that um, the example I'm using here, this node DHT11 hygrometer, this represents the temperature and humidity sensor on the board. Uh, so all I'm going to do is connect a tweak pulse node to the update pin, and I'm going to connect a watch node to each of the outputs. So temperature output here and humidity output here. Uh, and what that's going to let us do is um, basically send a pulse telling it when to update so that every time I um, tweak this node, it will take a reading and I can view it down here. Video. Uh, I connect the tweak node to the update pin, and then I connect the two outputs to watch nodes. I expand the watch nodes. Uh, just a, a little note on that. You can see the, the little solid triangle in the bottom right hand corner of the node. That just means that you can expand the node outwards. Um, it doesn't really affect the node at all, it just means that it has uh, more space. So, you know, if you're watching like a long string of characters, you might want to expand it so you can make sure you can see all of that. Uh, play the video again. And then I set the hygrometer node, it's connected to port D3. And I make sure I click um, this little one down here, the, the ladybird uh, uploading debug. It opens the same screen as before. Um, you should have still set the same board model and serial port as before, um, but make sure that they're set correctly. Um, and you can see it just has ticked this little box here that says debug after upload. And all that's going to do after it's uploaded your program is going to open up the Zod uh, debugger or simulator, and that's going to let us um, tweak the tweak nodes and watch the watch nodes. I'll play it again. So you can see here that I don't have any readings from this yet because I haven't sent it a pulse to update yet, but I've just clicked on the tweak node. And then over here in the inspector, you can see this little button that says pulse. I'm going to click that and it takes a reading. And then every time I click the pulse button, it takes another reading. And I can stop the debugger by coming up to the top right hand corner there and that stops the simulation. Um, so that's just a really simple example of how we can use tweak and watch nodes. They work similarly with other types of input as well. So um, if you put a tweak number node in, it works very similarly when you upload it, you click on the node, the tweak node, and then you can change the parameters in the inspector. So the next nodes I wanted to cover are flip, clock, and count nodes. Uh, these are all really useful for timing your programs um, and as switches and kind of control um, nodes. Here we have uh, two flip nodes. Uh, these both do a very similar thing. So all they do is switch between two states, uh, true and false or on and off. It's basically the same thing. And they do it in slightly different ways. So flip n times flips between those two states n number of times. We can set that in the n pin. Um, so we can basically set a sequence. 
We can also set the amount of time that it's in each state. So that's what the T on and T off pins are for, time on and time off. Flip-flop pin is similar in that it switches between two states, uh, but this actually um, does it when it gets a pulse. So that uh, TGL toggle pin at the top, um, if we connect something to there that sends a pulse, every time it receives a pulse, it will switch between on and off. That's really useful, for example, as a switch. So you could connect it to your button so that every time you press your button, it would turn the program on or off. Uh, then we have the clock node here. Uh, this is another way of controlling timing. It essentially just sends pulses at regular intervals. So we can set the interval using uh, this eyeball pin. Um, at the moment, it's kind of default set to one second. So it will just send a pulse, a regular ticking every second, but we can make that every two seconds or every 10th of a second, um, whatever we want. Uh, finally, we have the count node, which is almost the opposite of a clock node. So um, this receives pulses, and every time it receives a pulse, it increases the count that it has stored in its memory. So this could be used for control. So for example, you could set it so that your program only started after um, this count node had received two impulses. So you'd have to, if you connected it to the button, you could click the button twice and then the program would start. So it can be used in that way for control. It can also be used to monitor your program. So I mentioned earlier that you can't connect a watch node to a pulse pin and count is a way around that. So we can connect the count node to a pulse output and then connect a watch node to the count node and that essentially lets us see every time a pulse is sent because the count will increase. Let's go through those examples. Got another little video for you here. Uh, as I said, I'm gonna start off with the flip and times node, and then um, it'll run through uh, examples of the, how we can use the other nodes as well. And I'll show you what's happening on my board at the same time. So here I connect the tweak node to the set pin. Uh, I set the number of times on the flip and times node to five so that it'll flash on and off five times. And then I connect the out pin to the LUM pin of the LED and set the LED port pin. Now, when I upload and debug, And see what happens. Down here in the bottom right, you should be able to see what's happening on the board at the same time. I click on the tweak node, and when I press the pulse pin, it sets off the sequence. And my light flashes on and off five times. And then I'll stop it. Uh, just before we carry on, the next thing I'm going to do is switch out that flip end times node for a flip flop node just so that you can see how that differs. So I insert the flip-flop node. Connect the output to the LED LUM pin and the tweak node to the toggle pin. Upload and debug. And we'll see what happens. So again, you can see my board in the bottom right. And when I click pulse, it switches between those two states. So I click pulse and it turns on. I click pulse and it turns off. Um, so that just shows you how those two different nodes work. It seems quite simple for controlling an LED, but they're actually really useful when it comes to controlling your programs. Uh, the next thing that is on this video, I'm just going to show you is now instead of uh, tweaking that flip-flop node, uh, what I'm gonna do is add a clock node to that top. So we talked about how that basically will create a regular ticking that will flash the light on and off. So I replaced the tweak node with a clock node.
And then uh, the other thing that I'm going to do with this is, as I mentioned before, we can use um, a count and a watch node to um, monitor the program. So I'm going to do that as well at the bottom. It's my count node. Connect that to the LED dump pin. And then I add a watch node. And upload and debug. And we can see what's happening on my board. So because it's on that clock node rather than a tweak node, it started straight away. And you can see that every time the clock pulses every second, you can see the count increase on the watch node. And you can also see the LED switch between on and off. So that's an example of those nodes. Um, again, you don't need to kind of remember all this. It's just so that you're aware of the kind of things that you can do. Um, and then you can go back and work through the tasks if you want to practice them yourself. The final um, nodes that I wanted to mention are a couple of formatting nodes, uh, concat, join, and format number nodes. These um, are really useful, obviously, for biological devices, because we usually have data that we want to kind of um, format and maybe store, maybe send somewhere else. Uh, so just take a quick look at these. So the first two, concat and join, are very similar. They're basically used to combine strings so that, um, for example, we can add units to a sensor reading, which is what we're going to do in a second. Uh, both of these nodes are variadic. So what that means is this little um, this little white tab on the right hand side here. If we click on that and pull it across, it will expand the node. Not only will it expand the space in the node, it will also add extra pins. So we can add as many pins as we want, and then we can join as many um, strings as we want together. So concat basically just is very simple. It takes your inputs, whatever they are, and just smushes them all together. Uh, join is similar, apart from it has this extra pin called D, which stands for um, delimiter, which is uh, essentially tells the node how to separate the strings that you're joining. So that can be a space or a comma or a semicolon. And that's actually really useful for data collection, for example, because we can set that to a comma or a tab um, and then um, compile all of our data and save it as a CSV file for example, for, for later data analysis. So that's really useful. And finally, this format number node. So uh, this is really simple. It basically just formats our number to so that we can see a certain number of decimal places. So that the digit pin sets the number of decimal places. In this case, we've uh, set it to two. I think that's the example I use in the video as well. That's really simple, but it's kind of useful. There are a number of other nodes, useful nodes that you can use to format numbers as well. Um, I haven't gone through them in this presentation, but there is a note about them in the beginner's guide if you're interested in that. Uh, so another video example, this time I'm using the um, this barometer thermometer node, represents the air pressure sensor on the board, uh, which can measure both air pressure and temperature. Uh, so this has like a load of inputs up here that we don't really need to worry about. You can look in the help pane if you're interested in them, um, but we're not going to edit any of those. We're just going to set the update pin to continuously so that we get a continuous reading of the sensor. Uh, then I'm going to connect up the temperature reading to my uh, the first pin of my concat node. And then the second pin, I'm going to set that in the inspector to the units degrees C. And then I connect the output to the watch node. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, connecting the pressure output to the format number node. I've left the number of decimal uh, places as two. And then I connect the output. I've actually, I, I realized this just before the meeting, but I've actually done something wrong here. So I've connected the um, output to the deliminator pin, whereas I should have connected it to the S1 pin. Um, 
it still works as a program, but you'll see the difference that it makes when, when I upload it. Uh, and then I set the S2 pin as, again as the units, um, so uh, PA for Pascals, and connect it up to the watch node. Then I upload and debug. You can see that because we set that um, update continuously, I'm getting continuous readings on these. Um, so I get my temperature with its units, I get my pressure with its units. You can see that because I put the output as a delimiter rather than um, as uh, the first input value, I don't have a space between these two, um, but if you set it up properly, you would. Um, so sorry about that, great. So that's just uh, a few examples of some nodes that I found uh, really useful during um, my kind of learning of Zod and that I thought would be especially useful when, we're, when it comes to building the kind of devices that we might be using in, in biology labs or field work. So sensors, um, things like that. There are step-by-step -step guides to all of those tasks if you want to work through them yourself. But in the interest of time, uh, I haven't set any time aside for, for us to do that today, really, because I wanted to get on to this next, next task, which is going to be the fun part. This uh, is the start of the building devices chapter in the beginner's guide, um, which is all about creating new nodes. So that sounds kind of hard, given that you've only this done your second session using Zod, um, but it's actually really easy. It's essentially the same as creating any other patch. And then all we do is add some of these nodes. So these are terminal nodes, inputs on the top and outputs on the bottom. And we just connect these to um, whichever pins uh, we want to see on our new node. And that allows our new node to communicate with other nodes. So similar to what we did last week, I'm now going to um, share my screen and run through um, the, the task, show you how to to build a node that will let you work with the OLED screen. Okay, so to work with the OLED screen, we need to install a new library. Um, like we did last time, we use this little button here and the library we want to install is called Wayland forward slash SSD 1306 OLED I2C. Uh, very catchy name. So I already have this installed, but you guys will need to install it. So you just um, type this in and double click on, on this one here and that will install the library for you. Uh, just to show you where it is, um, you can see here, it has a lot of nodes for using the OLED screen. Um, and I'll just uh, show you how we put that together because there are, this is essentially a library of different nodes that will help you do different things. Um, but we still have some stuff to piece together to actually get it to do what we want it to do. So the first node that we're going to insert is this one, uh, which is a node that actually represents the device itself. Um, so we can see here this has several input pins. It has width and height, which is the width and height of the screen in pixels. That's correct on our screen, it's 128 and 64. It has a reset pin, um, which I believe is if, if the OLED display has a reset um, button on it, which ours doesn't, but some of them do, I think. And then it has um, a dress. So if you can cast your minds back to last week when we talked about the types of pin on the microcontroller, uh, I talked about analog pins, digital pins and I2C and that I2C is essentially a specialized form of digital communication where you can have multiple devices connected to one pin, um, but you can tell them apart by giving them a name or an address. So that's exactly what we've got here. Um, the OLED screen is an I2C device, so it has an address, and this is correct. For, for the one on our board, it's 3CH, so we'll leave that as it is. The other two nodes that we always need to use when, when using this library and the OLED screen are clear display here. 
So that's one of the first things that we want to do um, when we're using this device is make sure that the display is cleared before we load anything onto it. And then the other one that we want to use is called send buffer to display. So um, what this does is actually the nodes that we'll use um, to draw things on the screen. So there's, there's, you can see there's several here, draw rectangle, draw text. Um, they save to the memory, your microcontroller memory, what you want done, but they don't actually send it to the OLED screen until you use this send buffer to display node. So this is really important. So whenever you're using the OLED screen, you need a node to represent the device, a node to clear the display, and a node to send whatever you've done to the display. And then we're going to put um, whatever it is we actually want to display in between these two. So what I'm going to show you how to do is make a node that writes uh, a line of text to the display. So if we take this node called draw text, and pop it in here. Uh, we can set the pins now if we want to. So uh, X and Y are coordinates where the text is going to start uh, on the screen. I'll leave that at zero, zero. So the text will start in the top left hand corner. The text pin is obviously where we can input whatever text we want displayed. I'll test it out with the word hello. Uh, the size pin. Uh, sets the font size. Uh, so for some reason, this is as a byte rather than the number, but essentially um, it just 0, 01, 0, 02, 0, 03, 0, 04, um, increasing sizes. So I'm going to set that to 0, 03 for kind of medium sized text. The color pin sets color, obviously. Um, the OLED has two colors it's monochrome, so uh, black and white. We'll leave that as one, um, which is white text. And the wrap pin says whether the text is wrapped within the screen or not. So we'll leave that as true. Uh, there's one final node that we're going to add to this patch. And that is the, let me find it, rotate display node. I'm going to put that up here. So this lets us um, set the relative rotation angle of the screen. Um, and what we want to set that to depends on, you know, how our, our screen is installed. Zero one um, is the default. Zero two rotates at 90 degrees. Zero three rotates at 180 and zero four rotates at 270. So for our board, if we're looking at it um, the right way up with the text at the top, then we want this to be actually 180 degrees to the preset. So we'll put in zero two here. Okay, hopefully that all makes sense so far. Um, now we need to connect all these up. So the first thing that we need to do is actually connect this um, node representing the device to each of these other nodes. So that each of these nodes knows what device it's actually talking to. Uh, so that's fairly simple. They're all connected there. The next thing that we wanna do is essentially set up a sequence so that the program runs through each of these nodes in succession. Um, so first it sets the rotation angle, then it clears the display, then it draws a text, then it sends that information to the screen. So to do that, we're going to use these update and done pins on each node. We're going to set the first one in the sequence, the rotate display, to on boot. So Every time we load this program, um, it will start the sequence off. Once that's done, we connect it to the update. So this one will start. Once that's done, we connect it to update on the next one. So this one will start and so on until we have them all connected up in sequence. So just as a simple patch, I'll basically show you how that works on my screen. This is the OLED screen here, by the way. Great, so I don't know how well you can see that, um, but it does say hello here. Um, so that's worked, but that's basically a really simple way of um, 
writing one line of text to the display. This is a kind of a slightly complex um, patch. It's a little bit messy with the links going everywhere. Um, and if we start adding in more parts of a program, so like a sensor and something else and, and another button or something, it's going to get quite complicated quite quickly. So what we want to do now is compile all of this information into a new node that we can then use in another patch to make it nice and simple and easy. Uh, so there are a couple of edits that we need to make to do that. The first one is to add one of those input nodes that I showed you at the beginning of this session. Um, and we want to add an input node for anything that we want to change. So a lot of these things um, on our board, you know, because we've got the same setup, actually we don't need to change the width and height of the screen or the rotation angle. Really the only thing that we probably want to change is what this line of text says. So we'll add an input node that can change that. So it needs to be the same data type. Obviously we're inputting a string, so we're gonna add an input string node. Okay. So it's just one of these little round ones here and we connect it up to the text pin. Important thing we need to remember here is to rename this node. So um, this little section in the inspector where it says label, that lets you name your node. And when we're naming input and output pins, whatever we name them, that is what the pin will be called in our new node. So it's important to name it something um, relevant so that we actually know what that pin is gonna do. So this pin is going to be our text input. So I'll call it text. The other thing that we need to edit slightly is um, actually how we start our sequence. So we, when we did it, we set this so that the sequence would start when the program boots. Um, but if we're changing the text, uh, that's not going to work because it will just upload, then it will never update itself. So you'd have to restart the program every time you wanted to take a new reading or something, which isn't going to work. Uh, we could set this to continuously so that it updated continuously, like we, I think we did that um, on one of the nodes last week. Uh, but we're actually not going to do that because um, just because it might take a bit of time for the program to run through all these steps. And if we update continuously, it basically doesn't give the program breathing space to actually be able to run this. So to get around that, we're going to add a clock node, which we talked about earlier, and connect it to the update pin. We can leave this as one, um, which basically means every second it's going to update the screen. So it's fairly regular, but it's not continuously. So it's, um, it's giving the program a bit of space. So that's it, you've created a node. Um, how do we actually use this then? Um, so if we go back up here to um, where it says uh, my project or whatever you've named your project, you can see that we're in this patch called main. I'm gonna rename this patch and whatever I, whatever name I call it, that's gonna be the name of my new node. So I'm gonna call it write text to OLED because that's what it does. Great, so you can see this patch is now called write text to OLED. I'm then gonna open up a new patch, I'll call it test, because uh, that's where we're going to test out this node. We've got a nice blank patch here and we want to add our new node to it. Uh, so how do we do that? It's really simple, just like we would with any other node, we can just drag it from the project browser into our patch. We can also search for it like we would any other node. There you go. So if you click on that, it will also insert that new node that you've made. So it's very simple. We only put one uh, input node in uh, called text, which changes the line of text. Um, so that's what we can see here. So what I'm gonna do now is use the sound sensor as an example to show you how we can now 
use this node to display a sensor reading. So to represent the sound sensor, we can use a Zod a common hardware node called analog sensor. Here it is, Zod common hardware analog sensor. Um, if we look on our board sound sensor, uh, that's uh, port A2. So we'll set port to A2. We can leave that update pin as continuously because that should be fine. And then we can connect the output to this node, uh, which will write the text to our OLED. So let's see how that works. You can see that it's still displaying the old text because I haven't uploaded anything new yet. And then as it uploads, I'll get some flashy lights down here. And hopefully, even though the pitch is really bad, you can see that this is displaying a value and it's updating fairly regularly. So because we set that clock node to one, it's updating every second. Um, so it's making some changes. So that's great. Um, but actually, what if we want to make some, a node a bit more interesting than just having you know, one input um, make it look a little bit more like the kind of nodes that we're used to. So if I head back over here into my write text to OLED patch, which contains the node, uh, I'm gonna add a few things to, to kind of make this node a little bit more complicated. So um, obviously having a reading on the screen is, is great, but it's often useful to know what that reading is if you're actually gonna build, be building a device. So I'm gonna add in another line of text. Uh, so what I can do is I can either find that node again, or I can just copy and paste this one. Here we go. Add it in here. We said that anything that we want displayed on the screen has to come in between uh, these two nodes, clear display and send buffer to display. So I've added it in here. Uh, I'm also going to shuffle this down a bit so that I can fit in another input node here. Copy and paste that and connect it to this one. So we'll now have two input pins, one for each line of text. You can see that um, these input nodes have turned red. That's because they're called the same thing and you don't have uh, two input nodes called the same thing because that would confuse the program. So we need to call them different names. I'm gonna call this one line one and I'm gonna call this one line two. So we now have two inputs. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to change on this second um, draw text node is the position of the text. So if I left these both at uh, zero, zero, you'd get two lines of text on top of each other, um, which isn't what we want. So I'm going to use this Y pin to shift the line of text downwards. Uh, I'm going to shift it by 30 pixels. Effect. Um, and then we need to remember that uh, we've set all the pins that we need to on here now, but we actually need to connect it up to the program as well. So remember, we said that um, all of the nodes need to be connected to the device so that they know what device they're communicating with, and they also need to need to be connected in this sequence. Otherwise, they're not going to happen. So if I delete this one. Reconnect these here, and that's great. We'd be ready to go like that, that would be fine. I'm gonna add one final thing just to show you how an output works as well. So uh, the output that I'm gonna look at is this dump in here. So basically this is gonna send a pulse uh, whenever my program is done. So whenever it's run through all of those tasks uh, and it's done, and then it will start updating again. So output pulse because it's a pulse pin. There we go. So you, you use an uh, input string to connect to a, a string pin and output pulse to connect to a pulse pin and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Great. So this is going to be uh, basically our final program.
we'll take a look at what this looks like now. So we don't actually need to do anything, we don't need to save this or anything. We can literally just go back to our other patch and this node is updated. So before it only had one input, now it has two inputs and an output. And I've just noticed, uh, it's actually quite good to show you, you see here this output pin doesn't have a name. That's because I haven't called it anything in this patch. So if I go back and give this output a name, I'll call it done. You can see now this, this has a name here. Um, so great, this is just automatically updated, really simple. We're just gonna rewire this now so that we can get it to display what we want. So the first line of text, we want to display the text volume because we're looking at the sound sensor. And then the second line of text, we want to display the reading from the sensor. Then just to show you um, how this works, I'm going to do the same thing as I did before to be able to watch this um, done pin and add a count node and add a watch node. And that's it, because I'm using the watch node this time, remember I want to use the debug button. There we go. I don't know how much you can read, but that now does exactly what we expected. So it says volume and then it has a, a reading from the sensor. It's updating every second. Um, that's really useful. And then if I minimize this, you can see um, here, we can see the count uh, increasing every time um, it updates and runs through the program. Uh, so we can monitor it on our, on our screen as well. Great, so hopefully that all made sense. If you have any questions, uh, don't worry, I'll be coming around to help anyone out. Uh, what we're gonna do now, same as we did last week, is uh, head off into breakout rooms so you can kind of um, work through this example and, and help each other out if you need to. So if, when I send you off into your um, breakout rooms, if you introduce yourselves, um, and then you can work through the task that I've just done. So all those steps of um, setting up the OLED screen, they're in the beginner's guide, pages 46 to 51. Um, and then depending on how quickly you, you work through that, if you've got a bit of time at the end, um, what would be really nice is if you could have a think about um, you know, what is the, what is the most interesting thing that I could build? So now that I have an idea of the kind of things that are possible, um, what could I build with this board that would be useful for me or would be interesting? Uh, or even going beyond that, if I had some extra hardware, what would I want to build that could be useful? Just have a think about what, you know, what, what, what would you actually like to do with these kind of skills that you've learned? And if you start thinking about that, you can also start thinking about um, what would I need to be able to do? What would I need to, to build that device? So would I need another type of sensor or would I need to use this device that I don't know how to use? Um, or would I need to know how to use, how to do this specific thing in Zod that I don't know how to do? Um, so it's just a, it can be just a kind of thinking task to get you thinking about that, but if you, actually want to get started with, with um, building a device and you're actually interested in giving it a go, please feel free to send me um, an email afterwards and ask those kind of questions and I can try and help point you in the right direction. So fill in any gaps that you're, you're missing. And that's it for today. Thank you all for coming.